All right, people, today I wanna to show you a way you can make a little bit of extra cash from the comfort of your own home or anywhere for that matter. I know when I was a broke college kid living in a dorm room, this would have been the perfect side hustle for me as someone who likes to dabble in photo, video, and editing. And the beauty of this method I'm gonna show you and these techniques is that you don't need a camera. You don't need a studio. You don't need lighting. In fact, all you really need is a phone. A phone that can take photos, which is pretty much any smartphone nowadays. You need a phone, you need a window, and that's, that's about it. And a, and a couple little extra things on the computer. Here's a photo I took on my iPhone with completely automatic settings in front of a window with no additional lighting. You're gonna wanna make sure that the photo is taken with the product directly in front of the window because if the window is to the side of the product, you will end up with some nasty looking glare on your packaging like this. Here we are in Final Cut Pro X. Our photo here by default is about four seconds long. I'm gonna drag it out to six seconds because I feel like that's a good length for a pre-roll ad on YouTube. So here is our photo that is now six seconds long and I do want to cut it out from the background. Now, if you use a blue screen or a green screen, this makes it a lot easier. But for me, when I was in college living in a dorm, I didn't have those things. So I'm showing you how to do it without that. So I'm gonna go in here to the draw mask tool and I'm gonna drag it onto our footage here, or I guess I should say photo, not footage. And I'm going to zoom in so that I can start drawing a mask around our packaging. If I click and drag, we get these little bezels that let us round out the edges to make it smooth. This doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but you do want to take your time because if you rush it, and you end up redoing it, you're just wasting yourself even more time. All right, so we are getting close to the end here. I'm gonna connect our last piece of the mask and we now have our packaging nice and isolated from the background. Now the edge of course will not be perfect right off the bat, which is why we have some tools in here that we can mess around with. I'm gonna go into the transforms and I'm gonna scale this down to 99% to shrink our edge a little bit and then I'll feather it out by about 10 just to smooth everything out and I think that looks pretty good. We'll zoom back out and here is the original shot and here is the packaging isolated off the background. Now our next step, which is going to seem a little bit counterintuitive, but I promise you there is a reason for this, is we're gonna wanna bring in a green solid in behind. So I'm gonna use a custom generator here, shrink it down to size, and I'm going to set the color of our generator to a nice vibrant green. Now the reason we do this is because the next step is to highlight our two clips and create a compound clip. This kind of flattens everything together. And now when we bring in a background underneath our packaging, we can use the keying tools to remove the green. And then we have extra options like light wrap, which helps us to blend the product in with the background. If you've seen my videos before, then you probably already know that I love Storyblocks. I get a ton of stock footage from Storyblocks, especially when I'm doing any kind of animating work. They have a massive library with all kinds of backgrounds and options to choose from. Whether you need basic stock footage, motion backgrounds, After Effects templates, or overlays, they have everything. So what I want here is to search elephant because we do have an elephant on our packaging here. Right away, this is standing out to me as a nice sunset sort of background. And the cool thing is that when you have a Storyblocks membership plan, you can download as many clips as you like. And all the clips on the website are royalty free. So we can use this for whatever we want, including client projects. And we're just gonna bring that clip into Final Cut and drag it underneath of our packaging. If you'd like to learn more about Storyblocks, then go to storyblocks.com slash Daniel Schiffer or go to the link in the description below. And now we can go ahead and select our top clip, go into our effects here and find the keyer by typing that in, click and drag the keyer onto our footage and it will automatically remove the green from the background just leaving our packaging. Now because the product itself had a little bit of green in the packaging, the computer can automatically mistake this as being spill from the green screen. All we have to do to fix that is take our spill level and put it down to zero and we have the regular color of our packaging back to normal. So now I wanna blend this in with our background just a little bit better. So I'm gonna open the matte tools here here. I'm going to shrink down the edge of our package by a couple points. Let's go with negative three and then we're going to go into our light wrap and we're going to bump that up to about 18 looks good. The next thing I want to do is center my packaging a little bit better. So I'm going to turn on our horizon and I'll adjust the X and Y here. I think if we go down to negative 15, that looks pretty good. And then we'll increase the Y position to around 52. That's looking nice and centered, but it's very flat against 
against our background and there's a few more adjustments we're going to have to make. The first thing I want to do is find something for our foreground to make the whole scene kind of blend together so that our packaging isn't just popping right off of the background. We can add some depth. So I'm going to go back into Storyblocks and I'm going to search for grass. And right away we have this nice option here of grass in the foreground and a black background that will be easy to remove. So we'll go ahead and download that. And now with our grass clip in the timeline, we'll go ahead and click and drag it to bring it over top of our footage and we will delete the excess. And already that's looking a little bit better and more blended together, but it still looks very fake. First and foremost, I want to increase the size of our background. I think I'm going to bring it up to about 137%. Bring it over to the left just a little bit. And I'm also going to bring it up to about 45. The grass is looking a little bit tall for me, so I'm gonna bring this down to negative 222. And of course, I'm going to increase the scale of our packaging now to about 130%. Looking quite a bit better, but still not quite there. I think I need to blur out both the background and the foreground. So in our effects here, I'm gonna search for the Gaussian blur. I'm gonna click and drag that onto our background here, and I'm going to decrease the amount to about 10% there looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna do the same thing, drag the Gaussian blur onto our grass, and I'm gonna decrease the amount to eight. Okay, so that's looking all right. I think uh, there's a little bit too much color going on here. I want the packaging to stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna select our background layer, hit Command-6 to bring up our color tools, and I'm going to decrease the overall saturation by a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And I also wanna make some adjustments on the grass here. So I'm gonna click on that layer and hit Command-6. And I'm going to try and warm up the grass in general because it's looking very green. There we go. And I also just want to overall darken the grass so that it's not distracting us. That's looking pretty good. That's starting to kind of blend together in the scene. Now I'm also going to select our packaging layer here and open the color controls again. And I'm going to increase the overall saturation. I'm also going to go into the exposure settings. I'm going to decrease the shadows and boost the highlights just to add some contrast. So this isn't done yet by any means, but just to give you an update, here is the photo we started with and here is where we're at so far. The next thing I wanna do is animate this packaging a little bit and I wanna create some movement. Don't let the word animate intimidate you. All it means is to just add some keyframes to move something around in the frame. In this case, we have this packaging here that I want to maybe, I don't know, we can have it drop in from the sky and create a thud into the grass. And that's how we introduce our product. So I'm gonna scroll through our timeline here and I'm gonna find a point where I want the animation to end. I do wanna have quite a bit of leftover for the packaging to just kind of sit there so people can read it. So right here on our packaging, I'm gonna go into our transforms and I'm going to set a keyframe on our scale, our rotation, as well as our position. Now using the left arrow key on my keyboard, I'm gonna click back a whole bunch to a frame where I want the animation to start. I'm going to click and drag our Y position all the way up until our packaging is out of the frame. I'm also gonna click and drag our rotation so that as it drops in here, you can see it's kind of on an angle and then it lands perfectly centered. That looks pretty good. I honestly kind of like that speed on the first try. We're gonna leave it. Now, of course, we wanna emphasize this impact right there where it hits the ground. So I'm gonna go into Storyblocks again and I'm gonna search for smoke and I'm gonna try and find something that kind of looks like an impact. That's looking really close right there, honestly. Yeah, that's the one we're gonna go with. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that. And now we're gonna take the smoke layer and we're going to drag it in between the grass and our packaging. So I'm gonna find the impact here. That's where it hits the ground. I'm going to back up one frame. We're going to play with the timing here. These things sometimes take some trial and error. That looks good. I like that. We're going to trim this up to size. And the first thing I want to do is lower it because it is way too high in the frame. I'm going to hit command six to bring up our color controls. And I want to increase the highlights, make this a lot brighter. I also want to warm this up a whole bunch. So it kind of matches the rest of our scene. I'm going to go back to our inspector here and I'm going to decrease the opacity to about 80% is where we're going to start. So we'll make a keyframe on 80%. We'll click through 
through. And by this point, the smoke will be fully gone. So we can drag down our opacity to 0%. That looks pretty good. I'm seeing a little bit of the smoke overlapping in the grass, which we don't want. So I'm just gonna grab a shape mask and a click and drag that onto our smoke, change the size of this, and we're gonna feather it out. Nice. Now I do want a little bit more of an oomph on that impact. The smoke isn't quite doing it for me. It does look really good, but it's not enough. So I'm going to go into my titles here and I'm going to add an adjustment layer. With our adjustment layer on top here, I am going to go into our effects tab once again and search for earthquake. I'm gonna click and drag that onto our adjustment layer. Now we want the earthquake to be at its strongest when our packaging hits the ground. So we're gonna set a keyframe at about 13%. We're gonna click through a few frames and right around there we can bring it back down to zero. And then I'm also gonna click through here to where our packaging is in the air. And we're also gonna set the keyframe to zero on this frame as well. And if we play this back full speed, this is what it looks like. Now all I wanna do is bring in one more adjustment layer on top of everything. And on this adjustment layer, I'm gonna to go to the beginning and I'm gonna set a keyframe on our scale at 100%. And then on our last frame here, I'm going to set another keyframe with our scale at 140% to zoom right in. We're missing the motion blur on the packaging as it drops into the frame here. As you can see, our packaging comes in and it is completely sharp. Realistically, when you drop something and you're filming it, that's not what it's gonna look like. You're gonna have some blur. So I do have a motion blur plugin here. I believe this is from Ryan Nangle. We're gonna select the moderate motion blur here. We're gonna click and drag that on top of our packaging layer here, but below the smoke. And the first frame that our packaging is in the frame is right here, so that's where it starts. And then we're gonna click through, and right there is where we want the motion blur to end. So it only lasts about five frames. Now with our motion blur and after adding some sound design, this is what it looks like. But we can take this way further with just a little bit of extra animating on our packaging. And here is what I'm talking about. Now, if you're someone who knows their way around Photoshop, you can use content aware fill to isolate the elephant's head on its own layer separate from the packaging. And you can export these as two separate photos. In Final Cut, you can then animate the elephant's head independently from the packaging by adding some rotation keyframes. Here is what the video looked like before. And here it is after adding this extra animation. If you can learn these basic editing techniques, you have just found yourself an incredibly lucrative type of content that you can deliver to clients. The upfront costs and the time it takes to produce an asset like this is so minimal relative to the amount you could charge brands for this kind of thing. Not to mention you can crank out so much content like this in a given week in your spare time. So harness this power and remember that with great power comes great responsibility.